Good morning, everyone. My name is Arvind Kumar. I'm from CSC Data Science Branch. Today, I'm going to talk about dead programs. Introduction. Computer science is young enough as a discipline that we can talk to some of its pioneers. It's astonishing to realize how recently some of the key developments really took place. As an example, let's look at the mechanism that's used pretty much universally today to implement functions calls with a stack using push and pop instructions to modify its contents. The stack stores per parameters for the call and most important, the return address, so that you know where the execution should resume up after the function completes. A stack might seem the obvious data structure to handle this. How else could you support nested calls? But somebody had to be the first to figure this out. The prehistory. The, pre, the first practical general purpose computers were constructed less than a lifetime ago. The construction of more specialized devices for performing specific types of calculations has, of course, a much longer history. The oldest known example is probably the Antikythera mechanism, which could predict the timing of solar eclipse. It originated in the second century BCE. The first serious attempt to construct a general purpose computer was by Charles Babbage. He first described the design for his analytical engine in 1837. But the challenges of actually creating a working machine with the then available technologies were overwhelming. Already the time of Babbage, a better understanding of electricity and magnetism started emerging especially after Hans Christian Orsted discovered the link between the two in 1820. But these insights took another century to find their way in working computers. That development was clearly in mid in the year in 1930s. When Alan Turning developed the theory of general purpose computing machines, no working computers existed yet, but that soon changed the first relay machines. In 1930s, in Germany, Kurad Zeus designed and built one of the first electromechanical computers. Around the same time in US, Bell Labs research, George Stibitz built a series of computing devices using electromechanical Relays. Relays were used in all telephone switches at the time, so they weren't hard to get. Similarly, vacuum tips for amplifying signals were readily available in 1944. In the Netherlands, 18 year old William van der Poel, about whom you will never you will hear more shortly, also started designing relay computers. A few years later, as a student at Delft University, he submitted the design for the complete electro mechanical computer to a contest. He had to settle for a honorable mention. A key step in development came in 1945 with the construction of EDVAC, Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer. EDVAC introduced the now familiar von Neumann architecture in which programs were stored like data in the main memory of a machine rather than being hardwired or plug boards, GR Dyson's book Turing's Cathedral offers a fascinating description of these early developments. The test studio on Petra with the new news of ADVAC spreading, Van der Poel got a chance to help build the first Dutch computer in 1947 to help the Delft University Optics Group automate its calculations. The machine became the subject of its master's thesis. Three years later, the machine nicknamed the studio, Latin for totals, took 30 seconds for an addition and 45 seconds for a multiplication. But it was used for many years because it could work tirelessly throughout the night to perform its calculations. After graduating band folder, Van der Poel joined PPT, the Dutch telephone service provider at the time. 
which was of course an excellent place to get access to large number of telephone relays he worked there with lender costenard design and construction a series of computers that were based directly on von neumann architecture one of the first of these machines were petra ptt electronisch rekena automat or ppt electronic computation automation automan which went into operation in 1953 both vanderpool and postan later joined delft university as professors in math department who invented stack subroutine were invented in 1947 on edsac electronic relay storage automatic calculator by david wheeler and they were called wheeler jumps subroutine calling via a lipo last in first out stack is very old idea invented by william louis van der poel in 1952 the wheeler jump consisted of writing the written address for a subroutine call as a jump instruction at the end of the code or of the subordinate just before the call that assumes of course that the subroutine code lives in regular ram as it would in a von neumann type machine the idea is elegant but has at least two shortcomings besides that part about using self modifying code course first the wheeler jump makes it impossible to use either direct or indirect resurrection for subroutine cell calls this problem was likely considered less important and the time because no general consequence yet existed that recursive subroutine calls were even desirable second if the program code is placed in writer protected memory the written address can't be inserted or the fly a way around this is to store the written address in some other designated place in writable memory hr discra discra described the method as late as in 1959 in his phd thesis in which he talked about programming the x1 computer the x1 had been designed at the mathematical center in amsterdam and built by dutch company electro logica it reserved eight places in writable memory for storing subroutine written addresses but the program had to keep track of which one to use the programs to overcome some of the flaws of wheeler jump vanderpool proposed implementing a push down stack in writable memory for subroutine called per petra regular memory mint magnetic drums memory van der poel described that method in december 1952 in an article with the mysterious title dead programs for a magnetic drum automatic computer dead programs were programs stored in write only memory van der poel wrote that to protect the program code ptra let users block write access to parts of drum using a small plug board the term dead came came back also in references to the plug board itself as providing dead registers that the program couldn't modify although the function call stack seems to us like the obvious way to implement function calls it wasn't immediately picked up as the right method this is clear for dich kistras phd thesis which appeared 7 years after van der poel article was published by but still described the older method happily some of the pioneers are still among us but as the disciple matures their number are dwelling i consider myself lucky that i could learn my trade from one of them even though i didn't realize it all the time william van der poel is now 90 years old and continues to work as he always has it just that the computers he uses are bit faster than that once he started working on almost three quarter 
of a century ago but about level orders of magnitude that is thank you did programs or proposed by vanderpool implementing a push down stack in writable memory for subroutine calls for petra regular memory mint magnetic rams memory vanderpool described this method in december 1952 as a dead programs thank you